the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. This, obviously, is a joyful season as we get ready for the Nativity of Christ. Very quickly it will occur for us who follow the Revised Julian calendar, or the Gregorian calendar. In fact, this coming Sunday will be Christmas for us. But there's also a large part of our population that finds this period, they go into a fit of depression. They have a great deal of difficulty. If you look at our society, depression is something that's very common. And there are large numbers of suicides over this time because of depression. All of us are affected by it in one way or another occasionally. And there are some things that we can do to help ourselves if you find it to be something that depresses you occasionally. And I know this is something that is on some of your hearts because I've had at least five calls this week dealing with that very issue. So I want to talk to you about that. The first thing if you find yourself having that kind of depression is don't make decisions. That seems very easy, doesn't it? Don't make a decision. Because when you tend to be depressed or a little melancholic or a little blue, what happens is you make bad decisions. Don't make big decisions. Set them off. Wait. That includes, by the way, getting on email. It's easy for you to get on email or text someone and say things you probably ought not to say. So stop. Don't do that. But one of the other problems that we have is when we tend to be depressed is we isolate ourselves. We tend to become alone. And we feel even more alone than we necessarily are. And so what we need to do is get out among other people. Force ourselves to be with other people instead of sitting alone. And you know, that's part of the problem of depression anyway is the whole world begins to close it on you so that you are the only thing that you bounce things off of. It's all very subjective. So if you begin to have that get out of being alone, go somewhere with other people. And now, some very practical things as well. <coughs> Sit down and look at the things that cause you to have some difficulty. Write them down and look at them honestly. Some things you can do things about, some things you can't. The things you can address, address them. And the others, set them aside. If you can't take care of a problem, don't fret about it. There will be an answer that will come soon enough. But very often, part of our difficulty is our imaginations. Our imaginations kind of track us about and things get bigger and bigger. We start seeing things in the shadows. We start imagining, oh, this is terrible. It's worse than it really is. And so sit down rationally and look at what you have before you. <clears throat> and the next thing is begin to start thanking God for everything He has given you. Everything. And write it down. I would certainly say one thing you should thank God for is being a member here. Having this as part of your family. To write that down. How often do we do that? To thank God for each other. Thank God for every single thing that you have that you may not usually think of. I got a, uh, maybe two weeks ago, one of those current coffee machines. I would thank God for that. It's so easy now. I can make coffee. I just put it in. And it's ready in about a minute. It's fantastic. So that's one of my little things to thank God for. What about soap? A bar of soap. Can you thank God for a bar of soap? I'm sure you would thank God that I have a bar of soap because after a couple of days I would not be present. So we should thank God for even little things that we may not imagine more. And what happens is as you begin to see everything you can thank God for, the world doesn't look quite as dark. You should then, after you have this long list, stop and thank God for each of those things. Say, Lord, thank you for Kleenex, for everything, for aspirin when I have a headache. For a healer, you can go on and on. 
other thing is have two close friends that you can bounce things off of. To say, you know, I'm feeling a little down right now. Keep me in your prayers. <coughs> Don't have a whole network of 25 people. Just two. And set a clock on it. Because if you're the recipient of it, you don't want to have two hours worth of, gosh, I'm blue. Time yourself. Fifteen minutes, maybe. But have some people you can talk to. And then you can begin to pray. The first thing to do is look at your day-to-day -day prayers. Are you keeping regular with your prayers? Sometimes, believe it or not, that's a big effect on your depression or your joy. Whether or not you're saying your prayers in the morning and at night, constantly say your prayers. And so look and see, am I saying my prayers? And if I'm not, begin to start saying them again regularly. Then secondly, and it always amazes me how the Father said this, sing hymns, sing hymns, hymns of thanksgiving, hymns of joy, sing them. There's a strange thing that happens if you're blue. Try this. Turn on, go, go rent a, uh, a, a movie, a comedy or something. And before long you start feeling a little better. Because you start laughing. And because you begin to laugh, it begins to pick your spirits up. Singing hymns does something of the same thing. Sing hymns. Thanks to God. Sometimes you have to memorize things. It helps you. I would suggest especially Psalms 148, 149, and 150. They're pretty short, but those psalms are very powerful. They're Thanksgiving psalms. I say that every morning. They're wonderful. You should do that. And lastly, remember it won't last forever. Always remember, when you're blue, this is going to pass. That's something we forget so often. We get ourselves locked down into it and we think, this is going to be forever, what am I going to do? And it gets worse and worse. But remember, this will pass. It will go away. So those are simple things. So that you might begin to get out of that and begin to have joy. Lastly, make sure that your life is regular. That's why many people fall into de depression at this time. Because there's so many extra things to do. Their ordinary pattern of life gets disrupted. And they can't function well. Make sure you have your regular pattern of life to help you pass that. That's one of the greatest little things that you can do just to get it packed and regular. You will find that any kind of darkness can pass in doing those simple things. And you can reach even Saturday night if you're finding struggle with it right now. You can reach Saturday night with joy and thanksgiving, knowing that our Lord has come to take away all of our tears Give us that joy of His birth, the beginning of our salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.